Hey everyone, looks like we're live. Welcome to Black Women Leave America podcast. This is a live edition. I am your host, Ava Laura, and you'll see my amazing co-host Jessica in a moment. And, uh, you know, as we said, we're coming to you live, um, bringing back some of our favorite people, also some new people as well. And uh, just talking about different topics of interest. So if there is something that you want us to discuss, let us know. Uh, We've gotten a lot of feedback. We love it. Uh, As always, uh, we'll be monitoring the comments. If you watch last week's live, it was it was a doozy. It was it was hot. It was hot in the comments. It was hot. So uh, very interesting conversations (laughs) came out of last (laughs) week. So we will definitely be monitoring the comments. Uh, if you all, you know, watch on the replay, we appreciate you, replay viewers. Uh, we'll be checking out your comments as well. Feel free to share with your friends, like, subscribe. We got our binge watchers. We appreciate you too. And we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, Wendy joined us uh, for our cultural liberation. Uh, where we talked about the intersection of mental health and uh, traveling abroad. And she's back. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about where are Black women going? You know, where are we going? Why are we going? And what do we need to know, right? Like, what's important in those decisions of where we want to go? And so we have another guest, and hopefully she'll be able to join us as well. This is live, so, you know, she come on in. We just going to let her come on in. Um, but let's get started. Wendy, how are you doing today? And just, you know, refresh our audience memory. Tell them a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, let's and talk about, you know, kind of where you've been in the world. All right. Thank you so much for, again for having me. My name is Wendy Alexander. I am a cross-culture consultant as well as an international business strategist, an award-winning international speaker and best-selling author. And so I'm so excited to be here. I love everything global. Um, So just a little bit about myself. I've been doing business overseas probably over 20 something years now. I started in Dubai. Um, True story. I jumped on the plane and decided that I was going to have a business there and knocked on doors and landed a contract in two days with the royal family, the government, um, some of the Abu Dhabi police. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to continue to build my business from there. And so that's what I did. Um, And so I lived in Dubai for about about eight years. And then I, you know, done some small stints in Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar. Um, Also do some work in London, India, South Africa, Namibia. And so I just love everything global. I I just believe that, you know, every business owner, especially women and black women should step outside their zip code into a different country code because there's so much out there for us to see. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I, I love that. And you talked a little bit about the experience um, in cultural liberation. And we were all like, wait, what? <laughs> like, that, that's how it's happening, you know, in Dubai and in these other, you know, other mm-hmm. countries. Um, you know, I already a- I already feel that the title is switching. <laughs> but anyway, well, it's like it doesn't happen like that here. Right. Like we don't, yeah. you know, it doesn't know seem how like, like, that funny. like I want to know, like, OK, so were you physically knocking on doors or what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, physically. See, <laughs> but th- it's different, right? They probably mm-hmm. weren't like ignoring your door knocks. You know what I mean? You know, no, telling you like, me. who are you a Jehovah Witness? Go away, right? It's like it's, different it's, culture. So you know, I honestly you talk about that. Like, what was that like? Like, you're in a different country, right? Uh-huh. Different culture mm-hmm. um, that you may or may not know. What was that like to say, "Hey, I need business. I'm gonna just go knock on doors of people I don't know." To be honest, so fast forward just a little bit. One of the reasons why we end up going over there, well, my husband ended up going over there. And I always like to tell people this because people see me where I am today. And I was like, listen, it it. It took a lot to get to this point. Um, We had totally lost everything. And my husband was just like, what are we going to do? We got to find something. And he ended up finding a contract overseas to go work in Iraq. And I was just like, well, I'm not coming to see you there. Then he ended up going to Afghanistan and I was like, I'm still not going there either. And then so he was like, well, our headquarters is in Dubai. I was like, I don't know where that is. You know, that was 20 something years ago. Nobody was talking about Dubai like they were today. Yeah, that's so true. I, you know, and so I just took that leap of faith and I just said, you know what? OK, this, you know, I got to see my husband. And so if I'm only going to see him, if I go over there at this point, because was, he was home, he would go for 90 days, come home for 30. 
And so I would see him more if I decided to, you know, to go ahead and say that I would come. And so I, I honestly went over there and I fell in love with it. And I was like, I'm going to have a business here. And my husband was just like, you do know you're an African-American woman and you're in the Muslim country, right? <laughs> and so I was like, yes, are you challenging me? He's like, no, I'm just saying. And, and he's six, seven and I'm five, four. So I'm looking up at him like, I'm going to do it with my hand on my hip. And then so um, after that, I came back again to visit him. He was doing a training. He's like, are you going to be OK? And I was just like, yeah, I'm going to be just fine. He's like, what do you want to do today? I was just like, I already got my plans. And so I will just never forget. I had this little piece of notebook paper and I actually still have that same piece of paper where I was just like, well, what is it that I can do? What is it that what opportunity does that bring? I don't even know what I'm doing. I was researching, trying to find people that were doing business like I was. I wanted to do business or already, you know, a coach that had already established themselves because I was like, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. But right. I couldn't find anybody. I couldn't find anybody. Wow. And so I was like, OK, so. Okay, guy, what you want me to do? And he's like, just go, just go for it. And so um, I remember I remember knocking on doors physically <laughs> and then going to them and saying, hi, my name is Wendy. And it was a training center. And I knew I could at least train something, right? You know, <laughs> something, right? And we all have, listen, we all got a training, a training spirit somewhere, right? It's think about it seriously, right? And so, and mind you, I had never trained before. Let me just tell you that too. Wow. And so, knocked on doors and I ended up um, meeting this lady and she was just like, well, what can you do? And I was just like, well, what would you need, what you need me to do? <laughs> and she was like, well, we're a training center. I said, okay. She's like, well, what do you train on? And I said, what do you need me to train on? And then, so she's like, wait a minute, you're American. And I was like, yeah. She's like, you speak really good English. I said, thank you. And then, so I was like, so what does that mean? She was just like, well, we're looking for a American, American to teach um, team building, and I was like, "Oh, okay." She's like, "Do you think you can do that?" Sure, absolutely. Of yeah, absolutely. And not knowing, and I like to tell people the story because a lot of times we get we get so fearful, right? Yeah. Some people in a different country, not knowing the language, not no. knowing anybody, a lot of people would have shut down, right? No. And so honestly, and at that time I was just like, okay, God, you, you got it, you got me, because I have no idea what I'm doing right now, but I'm just gonna go with your what you told me to do. And so I ended up, that was my first um contract, and I continued to fly back and forth. My kids were younger. Wow. Um, I talk about that too, because being a mom, married, you know, I had to take mm -hmm. care of my kids. And so sometimes it'll be taking that flight and coming back, you know, four days later and then doing it again three days later for wow. years, for years, for years, for years. And so I physically knocked on the door to land that contract and I stayed with them for years up until the point when somebody sold the company and they ended up rebuying or something like that. But I made connections where I still do training every now and then because that's where I got my start. So, you know, I always believe in you remain humble. And so, yeah, that's how that, that started. I did. I physically knocked on doors. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, and, and we're going to bring uh, Tanisha up in a minute. Uh, but tell me, Let's go back because I, I find all this fascinating. So, you know, we're talking about, right, like where black women are going. So your husband first said, let's go here. You were like, nope, I ain't going there. Let's no. go here. Nope, I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. What was it about those places where you like, nope, I'm not going, but I'm willing to go to Dubai? Well, at the time, because he was in the middle of a war zone, you know, and so I was just like, I'm just... I don't want to, I could have went to Afghanistan, Iraq, I'm not sure of, but definitely Afghanistan. I was just like, I'm not going, like, that's just not an option. You know, we have children, you know, to be honest. And so I was like, and, and, and if you think about that, you, both parents, somebody needs to be different places at right. one time if possible. Sure. Right. And that's how we were looking at that. But then when he said Dubai, I was just like, okay, you keep talking about this place. I was like, I'll go, you know? And I was not expecting that, to be honest. I really just went to see him. But when I stepped my foot on that soil, I knew that th that was a place I was supposed to be. And I knew that this is where this is where my journey would start for global entrepreneurship. Had you done any research or anything? Because again, like you said, Dubai was not what it was then, right? People were mm -hmm. not talking about Dubai. It wasn't glamorized, you know, it wasn't yeah. like one of those places you had to go. So did you know anything about Dubai then? 
I did. I had a client that was in London that I was doing small work for, and she would mention Dubai. But the only reason I truly knew about Dubai was from my husband just going there for training because that's where their corporate headquarters were. And he's like, "It's really nice. It's really nice." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, okay." Like, <laughs> I was just like, you know, I heard that still. And then I really never did. I still didn't research it. Even when I got on that plane to go see him, I just went to see him. That was my focus. It wasn't anything else. I love it. I love it. Listen, faith. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's a whole, faith. So some of this is going to be a faith walk. <laughs> oh, it, it was a definitely a faith walk, 100%. Because I didn't know anything. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know the language. I didn't know the culture. I knew nothing, you know. And unfortunately, at that time, there's nobody doing what I was getting ready. Well, yeah. well, I didn't even know what I was doing at that moment, but what I was trying to do, to be honest. Um, and it just took off. And then, you know, now 80% of my business is in the Middle East as of today. Mm. So more than the United States, to be honest. I love it. I love it. Miss Tanisha, welcome back. We're glad you, you made it back. Um, you know, you were with us season one when we were just getting started. Um, tell our viewers a little bit about you and, uh, you know, where you are in the world. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh oh. Okay. You can hear me. Okay. Good. So, a little bit about me. I'm Tanisha, Chief Wine Officer of Girl Meets Glass, and I'm based out of Paris, France. I've been here, uh, next month will be nine years, wow. and I teach wine courses, have a wine podcast, I create online content for wine brands, um, I do wine tours in the city and plan wine tours to other wine regions around France, and um, I like to drink wine and talk about <laughs> it. That sounds like a dream job. <laughs> yes, professional I love wine it. Drinker, I love hashtag it. professional wine drinker. Yes. I love that. I mean, again, you know, just like Wendy, like how, like how did that happen? And was that something that you were doing here in the U.S. before, you know, you went to Paris? Or was that something that you discovered once you got there? I mean, I was drinking wine in the U.S. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that's what I was doing. Um, and so that's kind of how I got into it, just drinking and happened to meet a gentleman who worked in wine marketing. He's like, oh, you should come do some work with me. And so I was like, all right, fine. You know, a little part time side hustle, whatever hobby thing. I'm like, oh, this is fun. And what I would do is you go to the grocery store and they're like, hi, would you like to try our sausages? That would be me. But it would be like with wine. Hi, would you like to try this Bordeaux? And so what did that and has. As his business grew, he started training staff and speaking at festivals. He's like, Tanisha, you need to come on and do this too. And so I would do that. And then I started teaching a university course. Mind you, I still had a full-time job at this point. I was working in IT security. So I was still doing that. But then this started, you know, things started happening, happening, snowballing, getting bigger and bigger. And I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. But I still never looked at it as like a real thing that could be like a mm -hmm. career and a life. The teaching thing, that made it a little more real. Um, I remember I was walking down the hall and somebody was like, Professor Townsend, Professor Townsend. And I kept walking because like it just didn't even register. And then they got up close to me and they tell me, they're like, Professor Townsend, you didn't hear me calling you? And I was like, oh, they were talking to me. I'm a professor. <laughs> professor Townsend. Why are they talking to me? Like, I, you know, I got excited. Like, wait, like that's a real thing and something uh, tangible. So... I never thought it could be anything. Even when I first moved to France, I wasn't, I didn't know what it could be. I'm like, okay, mm. could I really come here and talk to French people about French wine? The answer mm. is probably not. So there's that. Um, but just kind of still working and trusting and believing and that whole faith walk that you all just talked about, all of that. Um, and just having the faith that it will work out, I would figure out what my lane was, what I could do, what I would be good at, and that kind of thing. So, wow. hopefully, that answered your question. I think. I mean, so it's just it's kind of like Wendy, like you just stumbled upon something too, like <laughs> for, sure. for sure. But I feel like when you're doing what you're supposed to do, that's yeah. when everything falls in the line. Absolutely. Like when you're working really, really hard and you're just trying to really make this square peg go in the round hole or whatever mm -hmm. the saying is. And you're like, why am I getting so much pushback? Because that's not what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But this like, yeah, while it has been hard and I've had challenges, it was smooth, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not trying to, you know, say like, oh, it was easy, easy breathe. No, it was none of that. But it was easy and smooth in the sense that 
there weren't these whole bunch of roadblocks. It was yeah. like, you know, doors kept opening, windows kept mm-hmm. opening. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So keep walking through these doors, jumping through these windows, and don't worry about that IT stuff. No, I, I mean, I wholeheartedly believe in alignment and, and you're absolutely right. Like when you are on your path, that's it. Doors and windows will absolutely open and it's your job to take those opportunities and not be like, no, I can't do that. Or, you know, this is too much or what am I doing? Because neither one of you knew what you were doing and you jumped in full force regardless. And also a thing for me, being a abroad, I didn't have Mm -hmm. the luxury of having a whole lot of other options like I would in the States. Like Mm -hmm. in the States, it's like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I know all the words. I can speak English. It's fine. I can go get another job. I can do something else. But here, barely knowing the language when I came, I knew bonjour, bonsoir, merci, s'il vous plaît. That's all you got out of me. I think I could count to 10. So there weren't a lot of options. There wasn't a fallback. There wasn't a plan B. There was a, you have to do this. So I had to stick with it. And I think I had to, I stuck with it longer than I would have in the States. I tell people this now, had I not been here and been in the States to trying to do this, I wouldn't have this career. I wouldn't have kept pushing. I would have been like, all right, this is cute, but I can do this other thing and make money to then do this. And so this would have just, I wouldn't have quit straight up, but it would have just get pushed further and further back till I didn't have any time for it or I didn't make the space for it. But yeah, here so I didn't have that luxury, so to speak. You had nothing to lose at this point. It was <laughs> go hard or go home, essentially. <laughs> and I didn't want to go home because mm. In the beginning, Paris became a part of my personality. It was Mm -hmm. people like, oh, this is my girl, Tanisha. She lives in Paris. Like, that's how I was introduced. It wasn't, oh, this is just my friend, Tanisha. It was like, now it's a part of me. So, okay, I have to stay here. I can't come back. Oh, this is my friend, Tanisha, from Chicago. Like, no one's saying that. They're like, okay, Chicago. All right. But Paris. Oh, Paris, what do you do there? What's going on? So I'm like, all right, well, I want to keep this part because, you know, I like that little conversation and how that goes. So that was also a little kind of rah-rah to keep me going on the path. I mean, that's real. I mean, that is absolutely real. Not Tanisha from, like, not Jenny from the block, but. Right. (laughs) Okay, Jenny, thank you. (laughs) No, but let's talk about this. I, I find it so fascinating. Like, you know, both of you, like, how is it, you know, when there's nothing to lose, right? And you got to make this work because, like, I'm here mm-hmm. and I don't want to go home, right? Mm-hmm. You know, how is that? And do you think that it is somewhat, not to say that it's easy, but it is somewhat easier mm-hmm. to get some opportunities, you know, when you're abroad versus, you know, when you're here in America? Oh, I totally, yes, absolutely, 100%. I always talk about that. Listen, it is night and day, okay? You know, here is, you know, especially in the U.S., you got to almost like give your arm and your leg and everything else and your firstborn child, right, for somebody to really believe you or at least giving you an opportunity. And overseas, it's just like the door is just open to you, and it's not a whole lot, at least for myself, like explaining and, you know, there's not pay, a lot of paperwork, you know, they don't want all these proposals and they don't want to write. Sometimes I don't even, I didn't even contract. A lot of my contracts sometimes came through WhatsApp, to be honest. Um, wow. So it's just totally different. And then I, as far as referrals, the referrals, like people are just willing to refer you, you know, and support you and women get together and they connect. And it's just a totally different atmosphere. I know um, uh, for me, it's been so that's why I said most of my business, 80% is in um, in UAE, I'm sorry, the Middle East, but then I have another percentage that's in Africa, very small percentage in the US. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's because of just what you said, some of the opportunities that are not there. Um, you just have to go through a whole bunch of red tape. Um, unfortunately, there's some people that just don't want to collaborate. You know, I truly believe in collaboration. I'm always reaching out, trying to figure out who can I collaborate? How can I support mm-hmm. someone else? Who can I bring with me? Um, and I always say, who can I serve? Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of people lead with a different mindset sometimes of, you know, let me go for the money first versus serving. And I just have a different core value with that. Um, but it has honestly, as far as just, you know, going international period, you know, when you say, just like you said, when you say, 
I, I lived in Dubai. I started in Dubai. I'm a Dubai expert now. Um, it's a different ringtone to it, mm-hmm. <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, that, that's it's been easier for me, to be honest. Wow. Tanisha, what about you? I definitely agree with Wendy. Um, there's also this aspect of when you are not from a place, you can see it differently. So you're coming mm-hmm. at it from a different angle. So mm-hmm. you're able to come up with an idea or execute or develop something that they didn't think of because it's them. And so they wouldn't think of it. Um, the French people have a very specific way that they talk about wine and that they think about wine and that they drink wine and that they serve wine. So uh, talking to an American about wine, they are very one mindset about it. Whereas with me being American, I know how Americans think about wine. I know how they talk about it. I know how I can show it in a different way. Um, So that's something that I kind of bring to the table. I can think about it in a different way. And also, I mean, again, I speak English. I'm a native English speaker. And that's something that is still like one leg up on them. And they know Americans drink a lot of wine. So they'll reach out (laughs) to me like, hey, um, you drunk Americans, can we talk about this for a second? Can we collaborate on something? So uh, that's something else. And another point Wendy made about the referrals, oh, that's like 90% of the business. Wow. Um, being so none of all of this social media marketing and paid advertising and all of that, none of that. <laughs> None of that. Like so many people love Paris, love the idea of Paris and then have come here and had uh, a bad time or mm-hmm. have heard of people saying they had a bad time. But if they know someone who knows someone who lives here and they can reach out to me to book me for a tour or help me create a guide for them or, you know, to help them navigate some things like that. Who don't want a friend in Paris? So that is something else that uh, helps as well. That's a whole nother business. <laughs> it is. And it, and it wears me out. You hear me? Me too. It, it happens to me too, Tanisha. Yeah, for Dubai. People are like, oh, where can I stay? Where should I go? Where should I sleep? You know, where should I eat? What should I eat? You're right. So you just gotta send them links to ebooks. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's I it. Wrote this already. <laughs> My book's not ready. Get it's it ready. In- <laughs> Get it ready. Yes, it is. But you're you're exactly right. But it, it's definitely a lot of opportunity. I agree with you. And uh, Tanisha, I'm, I'm glad that I actually got to meet you on here because I've already seen a possible collaboration for us. <laughs> hey. hey. I, I want to touch on I, I want to touch on the whole um, the whole uh, Paris and and Fran- and the whole, uh, you know, there's a TikTok that went viral. Uh, Tanisha, did you see that mm-hmm. TikTok? <sighs> <laughs> And so I really be standing up for Paris, that. like like I was born and raised here. I've been going so hard for Paris; it's insane. I sometimes. Say I'm like, like Tanisha, yeah. you don't even fully understand this language. You need to calm down. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so talk about the video for those who may not have seen it and know what we're talking about. Okay. So the video was of a gentleman. I mean, and he just went in on Paris. Like y'all save y'all money, all y'all lives to come see this. This is what y'all want. It's trash. It's dirty. It looked like the Middle East. It's this, it's that. Like he went in on the whole city. Um, there were several things wrong with that. And then there are a few people that I know from here who stitched it to talk about the things that were wrong with the video. My biggest problem with it is the neighborhoods and spaces that he was in saying it looked dirty or run down. Those are largely black and brown, black and brown neighborhoods. So he wasn't in these, you know, so-called touristy Tourist spots areas. or the white neighborhoods mm-hmm. talking about those. He's over where the people who look like him and look like me live and saying like, y'all want to come see this? Sir, you're from Atlanta. This, what do you mean this looks the same? It does not. Where's the culture? Where's the food? Y'all got McDonald's here? Of all the places you could use, McDonald's, McDonald's is everywhere. Everywhere. I don't know of a place McDonald's hasn't touched. I mean, someone can inform me, but there aren't many places McDonald's has not touched. So that's not the right place to use. Um, And some people really took those videos to heart and were like, what? Okay, maybe I shouldn't save up my money. Okay, maybe I shouldn't go there. But I'm like, you... Whenever you travel anywhere abroad, you have to be open to a different experience, Mm -hmm. a different way of doing things. Paris isn't necessarily a place like, oh, I have to go do, run around, do all these things. A lot of Paris is sit down, Mm -hmm. have your 
four hour lunch, drink a glass of wine or have a coffee, walk up and down the streets, maybe shop a little, see a museum, that kind of thing. It's a different type of um, living and way of life. So that's something that needs to be taken in consideration too. If you're not open to seeing how other people actually live, and being a part of it. if you're just trying to check some monuments off of your list then okay that's a whole different story but if you really want to check the culture and see how people live you i mean one you have to research that and see like well what are these people doing how can i be a part of what they have uh going on there and understand it um and he didn't do any of that so I'm I'm with him. Oh, i'd love to I'm get so your live excited. commentary i'd love to get your live commentary uh ava laura go ahead and go i'm uh, i want to get her live commentary because i found mm. the video i i'm i'm so glad that you said that because like this is a thing especially as international travel you know gets more and more popular right like everybody's you know looking at ig looking at TikTok, and you know, seeing all the pictures and all of that. And so it's become really glamorized. And, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't really know what they're getting into. They're going, you know, for the Insta shots. And, you know, I remember seeing, I don't even remember who it, who it is, but um, this one woman had posted about uh, Greece and Santorini, I think, and she was saying how boring it was. And, you know, what a horrible time she had. And, you know, similar to, right, this, this guy, except it wasn't a, a TikTok video, was kind of all writing. And she was saying she had gone to do, you know, that the shoot with the women with the flying dresses, like everybody's doing that everywhere. And so she was doing the flying dress shoot and, you know, her feet were hot because it was, you know, it was like, you know, it was really hot at that that point in time whenever she went, um, you know, so her, her feet were hot because it was, you know, all on top of rooftops. And apparently they're doing this stuff on top of people's homes and, you know, all of this stuff. And so she was saying what a horrible experience it was. And I'm like, what what else was there to do? Like, that's all you did? Like, was, you know, take some photos and, and now this was a horrible time. And, and so I'm glad that you said that because I think Americans, unfortunately, or fortunately, we have this mindset of go, 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 go. And so we take that same mindset when we go to, you know, these different countries and we're experiencing different cultures. And it's like we wanted to bend to us instead of us, you know, going with the flow of wherever we are. And, you know, I think that we really, you know, talk about that. Like, we got to get out of that. Like, you are in their home. Like, if you're going to go there, be there. <laughs> You know, don't think it's going to be like where you came from. I totally agree. That's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. <laughs> I'm gonna be so I'm a cross culture consultant, so it's even going to bother me even more, right? Um, but you know, that's what happens. You know, we we tend to want to bring our Western ways, you know, overseas, and I always say you can't do the same thing. And one thing about Dubai that I had to, well, the UAE period, I had to really get used to was time. And what I mean by that, I would say, okay, well, we're going to have our meeting at one, one o'clock. And then I'm there at like, you know, 1230 waiting and it's like 130 and it's like 230 and they show up all smiles. And I'm just like, why are you late? Right. And then they're just, I was like, why are you late? And it's like, Miss Wendy, just relax. It's OK. Why do y'all rush? Americans are always rushing. You're always rushing to do things. Just enjoy life. Come on. Then there's another hour for us to drink tea, coffee, eat. <laughs> You know, and then look, then they have another meeting. Somebody else is coming in. So sometimes I would have like my meeting. Plus they would have three more meetings going on at the same time, you know, and everybody's sitting around eating, but you're doing the meeting. So I had to get used to that because I'm like, what is going on here? Because of our Western ways, that's what we're used to. You know, you be on time. Of course, you're not going to come in my meeting. You're going to have another meeting while I'm having a meeting. So, you know, right. So I had to get used to that. But you know, I think that's one of the things is that people will look at, like you said, Instagram, social media, and then they'll say, this is what a lot of people just want to go take pictures, but there's so much more to it. You know, and I also would say that people miss their opportunities when you go out of the country. You miss your opportunities. I always say, make it a bizcation. Look for business opportunities while you're there and have vacation, have fun, learn about the culture before you go, you know, set yourself up for opportunities that because just like Tanisha was saying, there's so many opportunities in different countries that they want what we have. And especially as Americans and native English speakers, like I, I was actually doing this other video about my passport, but this passport right here, it's like gold. Mm -hmm. It is gold overseas, you know? 
And we take a, you know, a lot of times we take advantage of what we do have, um, which is that American passport. And we just travel and we're just like, oh, I'm going to go visit this place. And I'm showing all the airlines that I'm on. But it's so much more opportunity out there if you just really take the time to really just like Tanisha said, understand the culture, mm -hmm. see what they have going on there, connect with people, you know, in those different countries before you actually go. I always tell my husband, he's like, we're going on vacation. I was like, you do know it's a bizcation, right? And he's yeah. like, That's but he was like, well, how many days do you need? And so up front, he knows the first three days is business or it is the last three days, right? Because I'm not going to anybody's country without looking for opportunity. Y'all, she just put y'all on game. I mean, so so talk about that. Like, what what are some things that you can do to prepare for that, right? Because most people, they just going on vacation, right? So what can they do a little differently to make it a vacation? Wendy, I do want to say one thing. I had to chuckle a bit when you mentioned um, how they start the meetings late and how they have to take tea time. The French people are like that, but they have to smoke uh three to four cigarettes, and then we can start our meeting. Wow. So they See? all have to take this period of time to do something else to get in the mindset of the meeting. Mm, and then the first sense. thing, oh, you Americans are always so business, business, yeah. business. And I'm like, okay. I Americans. would fit in perfectly in both of those spaces because I am the person <laughs> that's always late. I'm the person that's always like, you know what? Let it flow. I'm here now. Oh yeah, you would do well. Yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> my I family's always that. like, Jessica, always an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm the here, transition right? was hard too. Coming back to the states, and I'm just like, I get in meetings, and I'm just like, why are y'all so uptight? Just relax. <laughs> you know. So now the transition, I'm like, what do y'all? I said, what did y'all do this weekend? They're looking at me like, what is going on with her? And I'm like, oh. Okay, like this is how it was like because you forget right like yes, this is I how do. I was dealing with all those years yes I call it cult I call it cultural re-entry mm. you know trying to re-enter back into your own culture is a cultural shock of its own to be wow. honest That's but a um <laughs> there's a whole other thing exactly but I think to get ready for a biscation, one of the things I do, this is honestly what I do. I, you know, if I, let's say for instance, I'm going to actually speak in Jamaica um, and I've never been to Jamaica, don't know anything about Jamaica um, because my focus has been on different parts of the world other than Jamaica. And so I am now in the process of researching um, the culture, understanding the laws there, how they do business, how you set up a business there in Jamaica. Um, some of the gaps in services, I've joined um, focus groups. I've set up my own focus groups. Um, I've joined some Telegram groups, some WhatsApp groups. I've joined some groups on uh, Facebook as well. I follow a lot of people from TikTok to do business in Jamaica. From there, um, I'll look and see. I do a SWOT analysis mm -hmm. to see if there's any type of opportunities that's there for my business or my client's business. So Biscations are not just for me. Biscations are not right. Actually, right now, it's mostly for my clients because just like Tanisha said, a lot of my um, opportunities come from referrals, um, mm -hmm. to be honest. And so there's, you know, when I'm on social media and stuff, it's like now I'm on there just honestly for fun <laughs> and just and bringing awareness to people about opportunities mm -hmm. versus trying to, oh, gosh, let me get this sale today. I got to get this client. It's totally different. Right. Beautiful. And so now I go on these biscations to find opportunities. Um, Usually it's from my clients, um, and especially this one in Jamaica. I'm almost certain whatever I find the opportunity in Jamaica will go to a client because I'm really focused on um, Africa right now. Mm -hmm. So then I do that SWOT analysis. From that, I'll see, you know, what are the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats. Then I'll go over to the embassy and see, you know, what their procedures are. Then I go and um, join maybe some groups um, within uh, the government as well to see exactly what their gaps are because they're going to know first before anybody else. And... And then once I get there, before I get there, I usually actually have meetings already set up. Um, once I get there, I meet with those people that I've been talking to for probably at least three months. So the three, the first three months before I go prior to I go to Jamaica, I will have conversations, meetings with people. And then when I get there, it's just like, oh, OK, we know, we know each other. We're just going to finish up our conversation in person now or close a deal in person. Or maybe the deal has closed before I got there. Did y'all take notes? <laughs> if y'all ain't take notes, run that back and take notes. Listen, let me just ask you that. So that's the first time I've ever done that on an interview, just so y'all know. And so, so I hope they did, because listen, I, whatever you ask me, I'm I'm open book. I'm not that was me. gold. I don't, I don't gatekeep. Okay, if you ask me, you ask me. <laughs> that was gold. 
that was gold. So yeah, y'all y'all need to be taking notes because she just put y'all on game. And, and that's the thing too. You know, there are so many opportunities out there and there's so many things going on and people don't share. You know, you see them doing it. You like how they doing it and nobody want to tell you. Yeah, nah, I don't get keep that. And I'll be honest with you, the, the Middle East taught me that to be, to be very transparent. Um, when I was in the States, you know, we didn't share, you know, everything was like, oh, well, how much is it going to cost? You know, what's the, you know, and when I was over there, they were just so free of giving and giving. And I was just like, so how much is it? And they just like, how much is what? I said, what you just shared with me? And they're just like, why would you ask me for that? You know, so and I was just like, huh. So I started just honestly, just freely giving. And now I just I always say, you know what? It always comes back to you. Just be willing to serve, you know, lead with a servant heart and that's it. And everything comes back to you. And so that's just what I go with now. I love it. I love I love it. Um, Wow. I mean, I have I have so many questions. Jessica, you're right. Like it always changes, right? It always like changes. really, I'm like, what's the best places to have a business, right? Um, but also too, Wendy, so I, I do want to know this because there's a lot of um misconceptions, especially about Africa. What is it like doing business in Africa? I'll say it's probably the same thing, this misconceptions that Tanisha has about Paris, to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, truthfully, you know, because people would not, a lot of times people don't say a, a what? And just like even Dubai, a, a black woman, you know, doing business right. in Paris and Dubai, really? Um, but Africa, it, it, you know, there are some misconceptions, and but some things are true. And that's mm -hmm. why I say you always have to do your due diligence, you know? It can't be, you know, a lot of times I notice people, they meet people on social media. And then they want to send them, you know, proposals and then they'll, mm -hmm. you know, meet that way. And I'll just, you know, always forewarn people that's just not the way to go, um, unfortunately. And I've had clients who have had situations where they have run into some terrible situations. And that's why they became my client mm -hmm. so they can avoid those the next time. Um, but but. At the same time, you see where Africa is going now. You know, yeah. there are some amazing opportunities, very smart individuals in Africa. I have lots of partnerships now. I started an NGO in South Africa, Namibia, um, and now working on something in Uganda. So it's plenty of opportunity, more than it was, I would say, prior. But I would just say, do your due diligence. You always have someone on the ground. You always have someone on the ground. That you can trust. I'm gonna say that yeah. one more time. I have heard that many a time. That you can trust, and yep. so every single country or place that I do business is, I have someone on the ground. Okay. And somewhere, anywhere, I go. I can even if I have not personally done, I'll always make sure I'm, I can do a relationship with that. And so when it comes for Africa right now, I would just say if if you ever thought about doing business, or even a lot of people are coming to me, like I have a couple of people tomorrow, they're moving. They want to move to Africa, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so if you ever thought about it, this is the time. There's no other time like now to do business in Africa. And I would say South Africa, um, Ghana, Namibia, which is untapped, and definitely um, Ethiopia um, mm -hmm. as well. And then Uganda and Rwanda. Yeah, Rwanda. I'm hearing is, is is yeah. They they definitely rebranded themselves. Yeah, <laughs> so. and Kenya, and Kenya, and Kenya. Kenya's yeah, president is coming through too. Nigeria's president too. So they have some new presidents. There's a lot of opportunity. But I'll just say, just do your due diligence. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's just not a place where you really want to just say, I just want to jump out there. Like, I wouldn't. I didn't jump into Africa like I did the UAE. Yeah. <laughs> Put it that way, okay? But I didn't do that. So that that would be my advice. That's real. So, all right. Again, bring them notes. <laughs> she gave y'all several places to check out and go to and how to do it. And yes, yes, have somebody on the ground. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard that. So, yes, that that is correct. Uh, Tanisha, like, what would you recommend? So, you know, if, if there were women who say, you know what, I want to go to Paris. and I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know, living there and starting a business there as well. What What would you recommend to them? First things first, I would recommend learning the language. I would not mm -hmm. suggest anybody come over here how I did, just winging it with knowing a couple numbers and some basic hello, goodbye, thank you. Like, no. Because the thing about it is, while there are a lot of people who speak English, mm -hmm. they appreciate and respect you more yes. when you speak their language if you're trying to do business. Also, there is something to be said for your confidence in approaching people when you aren't sure if you can talk. 
Mm. Um, none of us here on this uh, live are illiterate, but think about if you go to say Germany, like you don't speak German. So you trying to get some German words out, just that feeling of, I'm not sure what I'm about to say, that mm -hmm. feeling of not being able to speak or be understood or someone under or understanding someone else that will also make you kind of shrink yourself a little bit. So if you can have an understanding of the language, whether you're coming to France, Spain, Portugal, you want to go to Germany, Italy, anything like that. I'm naming European places because mm -hmm. I'm in Europe. Um, I would say get a handle on the language. You can get the rest of it here by immersion, mm -hmm. but don't start off with nothing. Don't, I won't suggest that for anyone. Um, another thing is to really think about what you're good at. Um, and then when you come in, figure out maybe how that can kind of fit in. So move in those spaces. When I first got here, I joined expat meetup groups. Okay. I was in black expats because um, I was like, I need to see the people who, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I joined black expats. I joined American expats and um, I joined a, a wine one. That one didn't meet that much, but I joined a cocktail one. Mm. Um, it was called, yeah, I joined a cocktail and I'm like, these are things that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So let's just see who I meet. And I was, I didn't know quite what I wanted to do. So when I met people, I was just meeting them off of, let's just be friends. Let's hang out. You know, I'm new here. I want to go see this museum. I want to go to this cafe. So later on, when I did have a business idea or I did want to do something in business, they had no problem helping me because now we're friends. We have built up a relationship. Mm -hmm. I didn't just come to them, hitting them over the head like, hey, I'm starting this business. You want to help me? And we've yeah. only talked for 30 seconds. That wasn't it. So people, I would say build relationships first. Mm -hmm. Not a language, build relationships. Because even now, relationships are so important for what I'm mm -hmm. doing. There are people who will jump over buildings to help me just because now we have a relationship. We're friends. And so they want to do this for me. They also see that I bring them Americans who want to spend money. So that helps. <laughs> <me spend money. laughs> Man. But it's because I built these relationships. So I would say those would be like the most important things that I would say um, kind of to start off with. I love that. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, we talk about that all the time. Like, you know, business is all about relationships like that. That is the heartbeat of any business. And if you don't have relationships, you do not have a business. And, yeah, and, you know, and be careful with how you build them, not just mm -hmm. you meeting someone right off the top. Oh, you know what? I think you can help me with this. Or, hey, you know what? I am developing an app. Do you think you want to buy into this? Or I just started to go fund me. It's like we have talked for five minutes. What? Mm -hmm. not not yet let's baby steps you know every time i go into my linkedin inbox and somebody hitting me over the head and trying to send me a friend request and i don't know you you already trying to pitch me i don't know you and you don't know me because you're trying to sell me something i don't need mm -mm. ignore <laughs> ignore ignore mm -mm. ignore 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 I so, yes I will say though, speaking of LinkedIn, but that is um, another nugget for y'all. That's actually a great place to get business opportunities. You know, as long as you control that, to be honest, that's especially international. My LinkedIn, I think yesterday morning mm -hmm. has 74, um, uh, what do you call it? Referrals to do. So yeah, so it's a great, that's that. It you were about to have 75. It. See? <laughs> wow. Wow. I need, I need to move. Yeah, it just depends. <laughs> they do they, they do spam you a lot. You know, they do yeah. spam a lot. So I try, what I do is, here's another, another. I really strategically just target the people who are in my target audience. And then I just worry about them. And then I join audio lives to connect mm -hmm. with those people as well. Mm -hmm. But those, but most of my opportunities, a lot of them, um, like I had three proposals now, but they came, they came from LinkedIn. Wow. Wow. And so you started in the UAE training, not knowing what the heck you were even going to train. And and so, like, where are you now? What what are, how has your business evolved? I am still a trainer now. I'm a, a real trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you was a real trainer then. You got I was before. just about to say that. I was just oh, about okay, to say okay. that. Yes, yeah, OK, so I'm a trainer. I'm, I'm a trainer, but I also do international speaking and I do a lot of um, international beach, uh, business um, 
business strategies for different companies, uh, help women to expand their businesses global as well. Um, and I still have my business in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Kuwait, Bahrain, a lot of parts, pretty much most of the Middle East, except for like Iraq, Afghanistan, places like that. Mm -hmm. um, Saudi Arabia, and this is, here's another nugget, like, Saudi Arabia is actually opening up. Um, there was one point in time when, you know, uh, women couldn't drive, you know, they can drive now mm -hmm. and um, things are coming up with the healthcare system over there. So it's lots of opportunity, y'all, for women over there now. Um, they're opening up as well. And so I just do a, still do a lot of work traveling. Um, been here in the United States in the pandemic since my husband semi, what you call retired from going overseas. And so 2024, I'll probably be living in some other country. Well, probably a couple of countries actually right now, it looks like. So you're still, you're traveling back and forth. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. And I, and I take women with me. Oh, that is all. Okay. Yeah, I created we business, a We got businesscations. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I created a cohort because I thought it was important because women still weren't leaving, you know? And so when I started, mm -hmm. when I lived in Dubai, I was just like, they were like, oh, I want to come. I want to come. And I was like, well, come on. Now you got your passport. Come on. And they still wouldn't. So I mm -hmm. used to create these events in Dubai. Um, uh, number one, because women wouldn't leave. Number two, women were trying to get speaking opportunities in the States and they couldn't get the opportunity so I created a conference in Dubai every year. So then when they spoke, they became international speakers. So then therefore I gave you the platform, right? And so I could listen, that's no problem. We're going to create our own platform, right? We're going to get this done. Um, and so now I do the same thing. So next year it'll be South Africa and we'll just repeat the process. And mm -hmm. I do cohorts every six months to, you know, help women to, to expand their businesses globally, but also then you go out of the country too. So then you're shadowing me and I'm helping you and I'm your liaison to help you build those connections and, and land those contracts because I love sales. <laughs> I just want to point out how yeah. dope it is that one woman took a step of faith out and then now she's coming back and pulling all the mm -hmm. like Harriet Tubman yeah. child. She said, come on. <laughs> Super dope. It's like I mean, hashtag life. goals. Okay. Right. Well, um, Tanisha, you know, that's too, the notes right? I'm taking. Like, how can I pull other people in? That goal. Thank you. Yes. Tanisha, no, listen, I'm gonna contact you. Mm -hmm. I already got a whole plan over here. I'm over taking notes. Look, I was like, oh, that's what she said. Yeah, you're doing amazing. Like, I don't I don't think you understand how powerful mm -hmm. you are of what you have yeah. right now, to be honest. Um, I have been doing this business for over 20 something years international and I have never met a black woman doing business in Paris. Mm. I'm trying to, okay. How about that? Never, never, ever, ever. So yeah, I definitely- Hey, well, Laura, look at us making folks right. people. Look, I mean, that's, that's what we do. Look, look, <laughs> I'm serious. You have, you just had no idea. And I'm just, I've been smiling. I was like, how much if she knows? Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, and then to have this platform for us yeah. to be able to, you know, for to connect. Like I'm, yeah. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm really grateful. No, it's, it's. I mean, it's, it's, it's dope. Like when we, when we started this, I mean. It was, you know, really. I mean, I love travel, and I don't travel nearly as much um, as I used to. But all of my clients, I have lots of clients in Nigeria now. All of mm. my clients, um, you know, in different spaces, and then a lot of them moving. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like, what is yeah. happening? And so Jessica and I, you know, really wanted to explore that. Like, what is happening? You know, we complain so much about our representation, you know, okay. and yeah. what we see out there about Black women and about Black people right. and Black culture. And, you know, our thing has always been that, you know, you control the narrative. If you have an issue with what you see out there, then put something else out there. Show That's people right. a different story, right? Present a different narrative. We know that we're not monolithic. We know, you know, that there's so much more to us and we can see all the things that are going on that other people can't see. So let's highlight that, mm -hmm. right? Let's, let's, yeah. You know, talk about what we're doing. Let's share different women's stories. Um, and hopefully that will inspire. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you stay or go or, you know, if you just, you know, leave where you are into a different part of the United States or just stay where you are with a different mindset. But the goal is that you decide how you want to live your life. 
and understand that you have options and wherever you are, you don't have to stay stuck. Yes, and absolutely. I love it. You all have shown that. <laughs> you yes. don't have to stay stuck. Take that faith That's walk right. and just move. And yeah, my husband says, and, my, and thank God, and make sure you have a spouse that uh, also a significant other that agree. <laughs> no, it's a big thing, though. A lot of people don't it, realize it's huge. that. It's huge. People always say to me, because I, 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 nine times out of 10, I'll be in South Africa for a couple of months. And so someone asked me, it's like, so when you leave, so how does your husband feel? What did he say? I said, he's kind of used to it. He's just like, yeah. okay. And thank goodness we have our own, he has his own business. He was just like, okay, we'll just plan when I come out, you know, go back and forth. He's not as international. He's in Afghanistan. He's over it. Right. Yeah. He'll come and visit and stuff like that. But you really do have to have that, you know? And so you're right. So when women are talking about leaving, it's just you know, when you're looking for your mate out, that's one thing I'll just say, you know, make sure that they understand what your goals and aspirations are for going global, you know, and what does it look like for your family? And, you know, our family, we had, we didn't have vision board parties, we had global family vision mm. board parties, you know, so our children, when they were younger, they knew mommy and daddy is going to be global. That's what we had to do. And so when I moved to go live in Dubai for eight years, my kids were like, oh, okay, like it was just, all right. So, you know, that's what, that's what we plan to do. And my husband is used to me traveling and living outside of this country. And we made it work. It's been 28 years. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and so um, I think we'll, I mean, well, Jessica, you have any more questions? Um, I guess one question I have for Wendy, and then I have one for Tanisha as well. Um, Wendy, when you were moving, were you taking your children with you? Were your children staying with family members? How were you navigating that whole thing with your family? No, they stayed here. I wanted them to remain in the same school because I didn't know. I, I felt like, um, in which I'm glad I didn't because I didn't stay put. You know, I was going to Dubai, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia. Like wherever my husband was moving, I was building a business. Mm. You know, so whenever they said he had to move to Kuwait, oh, okay, well, we're going to look for opportunities in Kuwait. You going to Saudi Arabia? He's like, now you're really asking for it. But I was like, nope, I'm going to do it. He jab and everything, right? You know, so wherever he was going, that's where I was going. So when it came to my children, I, I want them to have some type of consistency and, and, you know, be stable. And so my family was my support. You know, I agree. I always talk about that and, you know, making sure that you have that tribe around you that understands it's going to support you as well. It wasn't just my family, but it was even my neighbors. Where we moved was strategic. We had a, we lived in a cul-de-sac. The family, you know, they were our family also. Um, we had an AAU basketball team that also the coaches didn't help with our kids, you know, at the same time when we were traveling back and forth. And so they did not go, but they came over there um, and to enjoy Christmas in Dubai every year. So, so that they made sure they did that. OK, but no, we didn't. We, we left them here and it, it, it worked out good. You know, a lot of times people say they were like, oh, your kids, how did they do? Did they do well in school? Mm -hmm. You know, both of them graduated the top of their class in high school um, okay. and soon cum laude in college. My son's graduating law school in December. Okay. My daughter has two businesses. And so. For us to be overseas, you know, I, I was waiting. I have never really told the whole journey about that um, and motherhood. And because I wanted, I was like, well, let me see how y'all going to do first. You know, <laughs> <Let me understand. laughs> <That's funny. laughs> how y'all going to turn out? <laughs> yeah, let me get a right? And so now that my son's graduating, I was like, okay, I think we could go talk about this a little bit more. But no, um, I, they stayed in the States and I, it was one of the best decisions. International schools are good. Some of them are very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of contract work in the UAE in the school system, which was also another reason um, I decided not to. Great question. Mm. Thank you for that. Yeah, because there are a lot of women who have children, Jessica, and that is one of the reasons that they won't move or they won't leave is because they have children. And a lot of women don't want to hear that, right? Leaving their children. Um, I remember when we talked to Barbara, she's in Belize, mm -hmm. and she got a lot of flack. Right. You know, when we aired her episode about her leaving her children on social and, media. Um, yeah. My God. Yeah. I mean, people had issues and I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, are, are you a mother? Are you a parent? Are you like, yeah, <laughs> you know, this woman, her kids? Too. Yeah, I got I got that, too. You know, and I still get it sometime, you know, but that's why I said, you know, the end results, you know, it's all about how you plan and. And I'm always going to be the one to say, listen, I will never be that. I was going to never be that mom to say my kids graduate. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I'm going to be going to college with him. I don't know where my, what my life is going to be like now that he's graduated high school or she's. Yeah. 
I was never going to be that mom. You know, I was going to have my life after my children. And I think a lot of times we don't plan for that in time to say, what is it going to look like after they leave? My son graduated from high school. The day that he graduated, I got a longer contract in Dubai. I left four days later, later to move to Dubai. My life was like, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, it really I'm started. ready. It ran out. It was there, you know. I thought it was going to happen later. I just, I had manifested. Listen, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a job. I'm gonna have a longer contract living in Dubai after he graduates. I said that four years prior, and the day that he graduated, I got the longer. But they already knew it, so it's just like I'm leaving in four days, and it's like okay, <laughs> like you know, it's okay. But yeah, they used to it. it. Yeah, and they was like, do it. They said, no, mommy, you raised us and you did what you yeah. done for us, and we appreciate you. Now go and do what you want to do. That's what they said. Wow. Now, I, I do have a question, and I know you have a, another question for Tanisha, um, Jessica. Now, are any of these um, places where, you know, maybe you are here, right, in the U.S., and you're like, I want some of these um, international contacts. I want to work with some of these international businesses. Can you do that from here, or is it important that you do move abroad, at least for a period of time? No, you don't have to. You know, it used to be like that. I feel like I, I had to, in the moment where I was, I had to leave. No, I have plenty of contracts and I never, like Pakistan. I'm the mm -hmm. director of international affairs in Pakistan. I've never been to Pakistan, but I have a lot of business opportunities in Pakistan that I do. Um, um, Israel, you know, there's places like that. But no, you can set up, especially now with technology, mm -hmm. you don't have to leave. You know, I, I do say this though, because in order to really understand your client and who you're working with, you yeah, should not right. just say, I'm never going to go. You yeah. know what I mean? Or not try to find out. Like, I do a lot of FaceTime. They were yeah. sending me all, you know, we're on the, the video all around the touring and, you know, the country mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But um, I would just say you just have to really embed yourself the best way you can virtually. There you go. See, there you go. No excuses. <laughs> no excuses. All right, so uh, Tanisha, I got this video, so I want you to give us a rundown of this video. That's my question for you. <laughs> Run that. <laughs> Run that. So hold on. I'm not going to play the audio because um, I don't want us to get flagged, but I will at least mm. just play the video and you can kind of walk us through a bit of it. Is he showing the different? Yeah. Okay. So uh, can you guys see this? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, now I can, yeah. Okay. So he's saying you spent all your money come trying to come here. Oh. It looked like New York. Where's this place? <laughs> so what I think, I, France is very big on their rights and things like that. So they have been striking um, about the retirement age. And more specifically, the people who were striking were the trash collectors. So there was a period of time where the trash collector, where the trash collectors were like, "We're not doing this. We're leaving all the trash out." Dang. So trash was piled up like window high, covering up doors. You couldn't get down the street. It was insane. So I think that was part of it. Wow. Also, Paris is a big city. Yeah. With a lot of people, it's very dense. There are mm -hmm. a lot of people who live in the very small um, uh, part of it. So, yeah, like these places, like these are all nice. I know exactly where that is because that Popeyes, that place had me in a chokehold for a while. Okay, because <laughs> Popeyes was new. It just it, li it really looks like a city. It looks like New York or something. I mean, it's it's not. And the part he's showing, that's where that's the black and brown neighborhoods. Oh. And so for him to show this, this is the train when you take the Eurostar from um, Paris to London, that's what it looks like. So okay. for him to say that about those places, and then he's like the walk to the Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. You saw mm -hmm. it was water there, it rained. And it's a park. So when it rains in dirt, then it is mud. I, I, I don't understand what... Well, he got the exposure he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's really what it was And about. you see the way he's looking. You saw the way his face Yeah, looked. he got he the, the exposure club. he wanted. He got the exposure he wanted, but also he's not looking like he's trying to enjoy himself. Nah. One thing I was thinking about when um, Wendy was speaking about how Americans don't, you know, um, aren't really researching anything or their expectation mm -hmm. when they go to a place. Americans go to places, I feel like, and expect to be entertained. Yes. They expect for like shows to be put on and things to happen and something will entertain them. 
And that's not always the case in other places you visit. You need to go and like find find the magic, I guess, not to use a t-shirt slogan, but you need to go and like find that kind of thing or make it. Yeah. Because to say, all right, well, Paris looks regular. Okay, well, what do you do when you go to Miami? You walk around the beach, you twerk on the boardwalk, you go eat, you go to the mall, but you actually have those same stores. So what like what are you doing? This mall looks the same. It's owned by the same people or the mall you have wherever you're from. So to come here and say, ah, it's the same. We got an arc at home too. Come on. Do you have a history? Do you know the history of the Arc? Do you know the history right. of this neighborhood? Do you know why the Eiffel Tower was built? The Arc de Triomphe. Mm. Do you know why this was put here? Who, who decided this would be built? What this was for? No, you don't know that. Yeah, well, it was absolutely an um, it was an engagement grab, right? So he he knew exactly what he was doing and how he was positioning the content so that it can be. You know, it's, I always say. Um, you know, negativity is triggering, and that's why it's worked so well, right? Yeah, and, and um, it worked so, well because he kept doing it. He has exactly. a new mm-hmm. power. Okay. Mm-hmm. Look, he said it's the gift that keeps on giving. I'm gonna just, keep, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> but the thing I never understand about that kind of thing when you do stuff like that to like go viral. Okay, now what? You went viral, and mm-hmm. then are you about to get a brand deal? Like, cause that's what I want to go viral for. So the brand would be like, "Hey, Tanisha." Um, but like, just to go viral, just say I went viral. But, right. Well, what? a lot of people don't understand. Like, you know, most they folks don't. don't understand that they they they, they equate virality to equals money, and that's not true at all. <laughs> um, it can in certain respects, right. but no, that's not true at all. So, I and think for some people, I mean, it really it, it's a whole shock because they weren't ready. Right. And they don't know what to do. And now they got all these people looking at them and they're being judged. You know, I mean, because there's a lot of negativity that comes with that as well. Now people know you or think they know you. Yeah. And that part's a little scary, um, too, to really put yourself out there, go viral. Everyone knows you. And then it's like, wait, everyone can then judge you. Everyone will leave all these crazy comments and things like that. So, you know, you got to thicken up that skin a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you gotta watch what you sign up for, especially with this online digital stuff. You gotta watch what you sign up for. So yeah, I always say I don't have to be famous, but I could be wealthy. Like oh just, well most let me be most famous, unknown. Okay. Most wealthy people, you know, ain't in that famous category, but that's another video for another time. Uh, <laughs> I talk to them all the time. We don't know me. them. Uh, yeah, a lot of people would have come they walking they walking down the street just regular <laughs> driving they got their they like they they their life. <laughs> yeah i was just listening to where the the and the, i mean we can talk about food later but anyway um the the founders of panda express right never seen social media really about them you know that they, they make somewhere around something billion a month it's crazy like you said a month I ain't know Panda Express was rolling like that. Panda Express is rolling. I don't know. In the mall, oh, people still go hard for Panda Express. Rolling. And he doesn't, I didn't even, I was like, oh yeah, let me go see what the founder even look like. I mean, <laughs> but anyway, another video for another time. Thank you so much, Nisha, Wendy. Thank you so much for coming thank on. You. Thank you. Amazing, thank you amazing sure. episode. Thank you. Um, I'm super excited about this episode because I love talking about business and hearing about business and navigating business. And now that I know that I can do business in a whole nother, especially without all of the proposals and the, oh my God, it's awesome. the I encounter here. Ooh, girl, it's like awesome. yeah, me and Wendy, I'm gonna go follow you right now. I literally only do business with people that I know and it, it comes about because I just can't. I yeah, That's my self-care. I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> and then I, had, I had to go ahead and get that honey book because I was like, y'all asking a lot with these proposals. I'm going to need some templates or something. I was like, I, I'm really trying to really get used to working in the United States again. It, you know, it really is. You're right. It's they're very different. Yeah, I'm I'm like, that, that sounds really. Um, I, I'm I'm like, shoot, I, Wendy, I'm about to contact you because I this is too much. Yeah, I I'm can. just not going to work that hard. I'm just not. But I do want to put an emphasis on the whole, e- like, I've been preaching and screaming from the rooftops, ebooks and workshops, ebooks and workshops yes. for the longest, because it's such an easy way for you to deliver that information and education, right? 
uh, in true. one way that you can just sell over and over and over again right. and only have to do it one time. So mm -hmm. I'm listening, Jessica. That we listening. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just started doing that. Honestly, I, I did. Uh, you'd be proud yeah. of me. I did. I started. I did it. I have like two ebooks, but I'm going to say something else to give you all one more nugget since you just added that. So the other part of it, when you think about culture, and especially the Muslim culture, most women will not show their face on a screen. So they're not nine times out of 10 are not going to sign up for one of your workshops on Zoom. Right. Mm -hmm. But guess what? If you send me one of those e-courses that I can do in my home or you give me an e-book. Mm -hmm. you know, so when you're talking about working with other cultures, too, that that actually works as well. So wait a minute. Hold up. You tell me. Yeah. Because <laughs> here's the thing right now, the whole talk in the digital space and all with all of my, you know, colleagues and things and marketers is that now e-learning is now shifting because of the introduction of chat GPT. So a lot of mm -hmm. folks don't want to, and especially in the States, see, a, you know, educational recorded co course, what have you. Um, it's starting to, you know, become le of less value, but you're telling me, oh, wait, go to a different, you know, there culture. You they right. value it. So exactly. that, and it's not even just chat GPT. Like people don't do right. it. Right. You know, you sell stuff all the time and you do the same thing too, right? You buy something online and you never listen to it. You never watch it. You forget it exists. So people aren't yeah. doing it. And so, I mean, the way that I've done it is with my one-on-one -on -one clients or, mm -hmm you know, even, you know, group coaching, what have you. And then that's a part of the curriculum. And right. and so they'll get that. But as yeah. a one-off, pe people just, they're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. It's but too much going do, on. Far yeah. It's too much going on. People are inundated. Mm -hmm. They're overwhelmed. They don't want to do it. But mm -hmm. that that's a great point. Like if you're looking at some of these other cultures um, in these other countries, they, they have a different lifestyle. They have time to learn something and sit there, there you know, like you said, drink their wine or their tea or what have you, mm -hmm. and, you know, take it all in. It's, it's that, that's, listen, that's a whole. Maybe on YouTube. Y'all YouTube taking notes. Podcast. <laughs> YouTube podcast, you know, the school, a lot of school systems in Dubai and uh, especially the Middle East, they use YouTube for learning for their students. Sure. So think if you had a whole educational program on YouTube, they're going to find you there because that's what they look at. They learn English from YouTube. You know, they listen to our podcast all the time. If you look at it, if you really just targeted it and, and did hashtag Dubai for your keywords and all of that and really focus on the Middle East, watch your numbers go up to the Middle East. Mm. Oh, Wendy, Jessica. you are just speaking. Because uh. <laughs> that is her thing, okay? <laughs> look at it. I love it. I love, I love it. Love it. Well, thank you, ladies, You're for coming welcome. on. Thank we done drawn so this much. out, but we had to. We had to pull. Cool, look, we had to get just a little bit more. Of no, and thank and you for changing the subject once again, because this is really about where Black women are doing business abroad. Okay, right. but that's all right. So, <laughs> uh, any last thoughts? Because I want to make sure we also pull from your brain, because I know number one, I remember. One of the uh, mm -hmm. episodes that I remember is yours. Like I, I had so much fun interviewing you and hearing about your escapades. Are you still dating? <laughs> Girl, no, I had to let that go. That was woo. Woo. That's all I, I can say. watch this episode. Yeah, you go, go. Okay, so we're going to do business abroad, but you're not going to, I mean, this business in Paris, but you're not going to date there. <laughs> but I feel about to say um, she filled a whole business off of drinking wine. Like, y'all, come on. Like, for real. Amazing. No, like, amazing. I mean, it's dope. It, it's I love it. Who does that? Right. <laughs> really. Seriously. So I'm all the like, people that I talk to, clients that come to me, people are, I don't know. I don't think anybody's going to buy this. I don't know if they're going to look. You listen. know, but that, and, and here's the thing, like, again, because we get so isolated here. We only think of the U.S. We only think of us. Again, if we go, right. like, there's six billion people in the world. Somebody right. is going to buy it. Exactly. You know, somebody wants this. Exactly. And they need that exact thing. They might just not need it in Washington, D.C., but they might need it in exactly. Mexico City. Exactly. Or where exactly. you might be able to sell it to Americans, but you're based in Mexico City. There you go, Tanisha. I always go global. I, I go international before I go to the States. So it's just like my Chosen for You Foundation. I start overseas first. I'm just now registering that, that come here in the States. 
even inspiring decisions, everything that I've done has always gone international first and then here because they've always needed it and appreciated it more, to be honest. And they mm-hmm. want it, they want what we have. And so I always, even my clients, I start them international first. I don't care if you're selling a book. I don't care what you're doing. You're going international first, then you bring it back to the States. It makes so much sense, you know, and we, like when we talked about last week, we were talking about the education system and, you know, um, black women traveling abroad, teaching opportunities and things like that, and just how different the educational systems are. And, you know, that's what one of the people said. They were talking about Oprah school in South Africa and, of course, how she got a lot of flack for starting there in South Africa. Yeah. But she did that yeah. because of all the politics here and, of course, the need. And, yeah. you know. She, she was able to make such a difference and they're all in college and, you know, in America now and, you know, all of these things. And I don't think that we we think about that. And there was this whole discussion, you know, that some of the viewers felt like, well, you're abandoning, yeah, you know, black people here who need you and going yeah. abroad. And it's not that they don't need you, but if you can make a greater impact somewhere else and now you can come home and make exactly. a bigger impact because you've already done it somewhere else. Yeah, that's the that's the ticket. That's it. Yeah. And that's how we roll. We want you to already be something before we say, oh yeah, okay, we'll give you an opportunity. That's right. That part. That part. Yeah, that, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Like, how am I going to do that if I'm just starting out? So that's that that's how it is here. Like people, I mean, it, it's, it's crazy. It's all the same people getting the opportunities when there's all these other people who are equally qualified or more qualified true. who will never see the light of day just because you don't know who they are. That's true. So, yes. Deborah's asking, where are you located? Um, thank you for joining us, Deborah. We're we're everywhere, right? All of us are everywhere. Definitely, de- definitely uh come back and, and watch. Um, Tanisha, where are you located? Tell her again. I'm in Paris, France. And Wendy, where are you? Today I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> and where'd you come from? Last part was like South Africa. <laughs> So there you go. That's where we are. <laughs> but go and just scroll or uh, yes. I always say rewind and then I forget that, you know, if you didn't grow up with a with an actual VHS know, right? tape, you don't know you what don't rewind know means. <laughs> I had that on one of my videos. Like you can rewind. And I was like, oh no, go back, replay. They don't know what that is. <laughs> well, be in the car like rewind, rewind, rewind. Oh, it went too far. Fast right. forward, fast forward. <laughs> Okay, we got it. Just showing my age. Just all out here showing my age. Um, but yeah, so just make you know, make sure you you whatever, scroll back, however you, you know, are watching this, uh, to listen to the full interview to kind of hear all of the experiences of these ladies because they are amazing. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much again. I think I've, I've said this about three times, but we really are ending it now. Um, this is Black Women Leave America, the podcast that explores the stories of black women leaving America, but also finding themselves in the journey. Um, and how we're able to now like bring information back, right? Like I'm gonna tell you right now, I am totally like refocusing <laughs> my target audience <laughs> right now. Um, and definitely repositioning uh, a lot of my content to make sure that I'm pra- placing content out there that is going to speak directly to the folks that are looking for it in other places. Because you're right, I am primarily focused on the United States uh, just because that's where I am, but I don't need to be there to serve it. So. There's that. Uh, Ava Laura, any last thoughts? I'm, you know, I I hope this has inspired you as much as it has inspired me. And, you know, our goal is always that you don't just sit here and listen and consume, uh, but you actually take action. You know, one thing that you learn from this, you know, take action, do something with it, be inspired, be motivated to change something about your life that you don't like, right? And that you want to change. Um, and so as long as you're doing that, Jessica and I have served. We are doing our part. Uh, please continue to support us because uh, we need it. <laughs> this podcast needs it. Um, and, and we're just we're glad that you're watching. And ladies, uh, tell our viewers, how can they reach you? They want more information. How, how can they reach you? Um, I'm inspiring decisions on social media platforms and you can find me Wendy L. Alexander on LinkedIn. Thank you. 
I am Girl Meets Glass on all social platforms. On LinkedIn, you can find me by my name, full name, Tanisha Townsend. And you can also search Girl Meets Glass there. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Well, we'll be back next time. Like I said, we don't know when. We Thank just pop on <laughs> when we're ready. <laughs> Yes. Thank you so much for uh, watching. Make sure you subscribe. If you've watched this to the end, especially make sure you go ahead and subscribe so that you can get notified the next time we go live. All right. Until next time. Peace. Bye. Thank you all.